So now let's go up against a group of Marines. We'll kind of take a couple over here. Now, against a group of Marines, it's a little bit more difficult to get good use of the Baneling because the Marines will snipe certain Banelings come, you know, Banelings coming in. And this, keep in mind that this is without Baneling speed. This is just straight tier 1.5. This is without the Burrow upgrade or the speed upgrade because the speed upgrade is available when you get a layer. So, using a baneling like this against a whole bunch of marines is is still pretty decent and it does pretty good damage, but you're still going to see the most effectiveness when you have the speed upgrade as well as the burrow. And I'll show you what I like to call the landmine, the, the baneling landmine here in a later episode. So let's go up against a group of marines over here and you're going to see that a few banelings are going to get sniped off, but still there's going to be a bunch of banelings that are going to make it and kill a whole bunch of these marines, if not all of them. So here we go, we're going to come up against this group of marines. And see, you're pretty much able to take all of them out, and I used six marines, and that was against 15, or six banelings rather, and that was against 15 marines. Because of the splash damage, and a few of them did get taken out before they exploded, but the rest of them were able to create that kind of buffer, those few baneling meat shields. They still exploded and got some of the splash damage on the marines we saw on above for the rest of them. So... That's pretty much the use for the Baneling. You want to use it against groups, unit, groups of units as well as structures. Single unit uh, transactions between a Baneling and another Baneling or a Baneling and another unit isn't the best isn't the best to use it here. And I will show you a little bit more effectiveness on, uh, or effective Baneling usage in a little bit of later episodes here. So now we're going to get into a unit that has caused a lot of controversy ever since the beta started and that is the Roach. Now the Roach is the first armored unit for the Zerg, it is tier 1.5 in that it does require a spawning pool and a Roach Warren and it has 145 hit points, it has 1 armor, movement speed is normal, it has damage of 16 and a range of 3. Now it can do a melee attack when you're right up close to it or it can do a ranged attack. But the thing is, is it cannot attack air. And what I like to do with a roach is if you're up against any kind of melee unit, you call it, you do a roach dance. And I will show you how to do a roach dance here in just a minute. Uh, so what happens is you need to get a spawning pool and then you need to make a roach warren. And the roach warren is located on the bottom here and it is the hotkey of R. It takes 55 seconds to build and it costs 150 minerals. Now once you have the roach warren, you can go ahead and make it from the larva as you make all Zerg units and it costs 75 minerals to make, 25 gas, and this is a recent nerf, it costs 2 food supply. It takes 27 seconds to make. So now let's go ahead and I'll show you some of the practical uses of the roach and show you what to you when to use them, how to use them uh, effectively, and also how to do what I like to call the roach dance. Alright, so now we're on the arena map and I've got my roach here and we're going to show you how to how to do certain things with roaches. Now we're going to go up against a marine first and you can pretty much just let the, mar let the roach auto attack the marine because you know a roach can take out probably a few marines at once so we'll, we'll show you how many marines it takes to kill one roach. So it takes three three shots from a roach and it's 117 hit points out of its 145 so uh, marine is pretty much no match for a roach. Now let's reset this and I'll put a few more marines in here and we'll see how many marines it actually takes to kill one roach. Alright, so we've got everything reset here and I'm going to put the roach up against three marines. So let's see how the roach fares against three marines. Now the attack speed on the roach is actually very slow in comparison to other units. So I think they'll be able to take it out pretty easily. You can see that the roach is actually in pretty bad shape. And he's going to be able to take out probably one marine out of the three. So uh, you take three marines to kill one roach. So now we're going to go ahead and reset this and we're going to go up against the zealot. And I want to show you how to do the roach dance. Alright, so now we're going to go up against the zealot. And this is where it gets tricky. We've tackled the marine and the zergling is pretty much the same as the marine in that you can tell the roach to just auto attack and it will go ahead and kill it. But when you get up to a little bit harder units like the Zealot, the Roach will actually be defeated by the Zealot. I know it's a tier 1 unit, the Zealot is, against the tier 1.5, but the reason the Zealot will actually beat the Roach is because of its attack speed. 
it does pretty much the same amount of damage, but the roach attacks a lot slower. So I'll show you the engagement, and you can see plainly that the that the zealot will actually defeat the roach pretty pretty easily. You can see that the zealot is attacking the roach much faster than the roach is actually attacking the zealot. Now the thing about that is, is you can send a, a like your roach up there, and you can try and micro him around. But the thing is, is that the zealot is actually pretty much just as fast as the roach, so it can pretty much just keep up with the roach. So you don't microing around is not the best idea if you're doing a one versus one against the zealot. So now I'm going to show you how to do just kind of like a little like a little dance maneuver with with your two roaches because you want to bring two roaches to a one zealot party and just you know just to go ahead and take it out rather easily and you can pretty much just come out of it without any harsh damage to your roaches. So let's go ahead and reset this and I'll show you how to just kind of micro the roaches around. Alright, so now we've got everything reset and I'm just going to show you how to do a little bit of micro with, Zer with uh, the Zerg roach. So let's go ahead and attack the zealot and I'll show you just the micro. And it's pretty much the same premise as the Zergling is that once you find out that he's getting attacked, you just kind of micro him around and then the the roach will run out of or the Zer the roach will run out of the range of the zealot and then he'll pick another target. So that's pretty much just how you micro around against the zealot. And if you're going up against a marauder or a stalker, you really don't want to go roaches because roaches are they are outranged by the marauder and the stalker and you just won't be able to get a very good um very good damage on them because they'll be able to out out micro you because of that range difference. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do how to micro a group of roaches against a group of zealots and we'll see how the tide fares on there. So now I've got a group of about 10 roaches and 10 roaches is a good number or the magic number rather that will one shot a zealot. So if you know that you're going to be up against mass zealots you want to have as many roaches as possible and you want to get to that magic number as soon as possible. And they will one shot a zealot if you focus fire it down and that's where you just tell the roaches to attack one unit. So the roach stance is where you tell them to attack one particular zealot and then move back. So if you have roach or zealots coming in from this side, you want to tell them to attack that one zealot and then move back. Attack that one zealot, move back. Attack another zealot, move back. Attack another zealot, move back. And that way they'll turn around, they'll pop the shot off on that one zealot and then they'll keep moving and that'll keep these zealots all grouped up so they won't be able to be spread out and attack all of your roaches at once. So let's go ahead and put this into action and we'll see how many roaches you lose against how many zealots they lose. So you're not going to come out with all of your roaches intact, but you're definitely going to come out ahead. And that's the main thats the main point here, is you always want to come out ahead. Even if you lose a couple roaches, I lost two roaches there, you're still going to come out and win the battle. Now, of course it's going to be more difficult if your opponent starts to micro their zealots around, but you'll still have the upper hand because you have that range advantage. So even if they start pulling back their, their one zealot here, if you're able to pop off a shot on one particular zealot and focus fire down that one zealot, they won't be able to pull it back in time for them to be able to save it. So that's just a small example of how you can do it, how you can just micro run your roaches, use that range to your advantage against zealots. So now let's go ahead and we'll look at some build orders. I'll show you what it means to 6 pool, what it means to 10 pool, some good zergling, speedling builds, some good roach builds, and some good baneling builds. Let's go ahead and jump right into that. 